Good morning. Welcome to today's Reflection from Christchurch. I'm Jeff Roberts. Back in those pre-pandemic days when one could travel freely, Julie and I went on the group pilgrimage to Israel with David and Mary. I've been most places in the world and, and almost all the places I've ever wanted to go to, but that trip stands out beyond all others. It isn't that there is anything magical about visiting the real places of the Bible but it does give you an opportunity for reflection. It helps to bring to life some of the stories we read and helps us look at them through fresh eyes. Well, like all good pilgrims, we took loads of photographs and I'm using one of my favorites as a backdrop this morning. It's a picture of the Sea of Galilee. And it's a favorite because we had a time of prayer just as we sat and stood by the side of the sea, which is, as you all know, a lake really. And in that time, I was very conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Seeing that photograph yesterday, I turned to the passage in Galatians 5, which is labeled in the ESV, keep in step with the Spirit. Let me read it. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. On Sunday, well, yesterday, <laughs> Bree spoke from James 4, contrasting the wisdom of the world with God's wisdom from above. The wisdom imparted to us through the Holy Spirit who lives in all who have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. And these two passages seem to fit together in my mind. In Galatians, Paul is talking about the desires of the flesh, which is another way of talking about the desires of this world, the norms and practices we all too often see around us. I'm sure we can all identify examples of people, leaders even, who have followed the devices and desires of their own hearts, as it so beautifully puts it in the Book of Common Prayer. And I'm sure also that there are times when each one of us has been that way inclined, Maybe not for the big sins, but getting angry with someone, being just a tiny bit jealous. Things that fit well with the exercise of the wisdom of the world. But look where Paul then takes us as he describes the fruit of the spirit, the exercise of God's wisdom, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. As I sat and prayed by the Sea of Galilee, I really felt challenged that my life should show these fruits to a greater and more consistent extent. It wasn't the first time I'd felt that challenge, and I'm sure it won't be the last, because we all need to keep on focusing on God. That was the other message from Bree yesterday. And of course, you don't need to travel to Israel to get that revelation or to be reminded of it. As I listened to David yesterday telling of the desperately sad response of the people of Capernaum to the amazing miracles performed in their midst. As I listened to Bree reminding us about God's wisdom, not the world's, I was challenged again to pray that my life, that all our lives should show those fruits of the spirit. We were reminded yesterday of the great commission to go out and make disciples. And it hit me, of course, that one of the really powerful ways we can impact on family, on friends, 
on the people we interact with in shops, at work, driving, is to show the fruits of the Spirit in our life, today, tomorrow, every day. It's a big challenge, but we're not left alone to meet it. We have the Holy Spirit living in us to guide and support us. So the challenge really becomes one of listening to the guidance and obeying. We dare to be different from the world around us because we're desperate to make the whole world find that same relationship with Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your amazing grace to us, that you would send your son to live and die for us and be raised again in glory so that we might become part of your family. Lord, help us to show the family likeness of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Help us in our witness for you, Lord. Guide and strengthen us each day, I pray, for the sake of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the song I've chosen is Holy Spirit, Living Breath of God, sung by Keith and Kristen Getty. Have a great day.